This year, I've talked about the big problems facing companies like Toyota, Nissan in particular, Honda, Mazda, and Mitsubishi, and in fact, many others in China. People don't realize that, in fact, for many of these companies, their most important car market is China. At the end of this year, there will be uh, possibly millions of cars in China that cannot be sold. In fact, at the moment, there's already 2 million cars that don't comply with China's regulations, which were meant to come in force a month ago, but they've been given a deadline now to the end of this year. What exactly are they going to do with all these vehicles? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I find it very strange that the media has just kept quiet, completely quiet on this massive problem. They're saying Tesla has all these massive problems in China. Oh, Tesla's collapsing in China. Oh, there's terrible things going on. But I think, well, a bigger problem is if your factory that produces a certain type of car um, is basically useless because uh, you can't sell that car anymore in China. Now, the reality here is that uh, China is more important to Volkswagen and Toyota than it is to Tesla. That's true in terms of sales in the country. It's more important. Why do I say that? Well, first of all, Tesla has no debt and what, more than $20 billion in cash. However, Volkswagen and Toyota, they have billions, in fact, nearly $200 billion each in debt. And they're producing cars in China for the most part, 95% of them that don't meet these regulations. That's a pretty big problem. Now, I think it's even a bigger problem for companies like Nissan. For example, Nissan sold 3.2 million cars last year, which is a big problem for them because only a couple of years ago, they sold more than 5 million. Their sales are dropping like, I don't know, insanely fast Nissan sales. More than 33% of Nissan sales last year worldwide were in China. And Nissan, well, their cars don't, don't meet the standards either. Car News China says that on the 9th of May, the Chinese regulatory body under the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology announced that every car produced, imported or sold since the 1st of July must comply with the 6B emission standard. Previously, rumors appeared that MIIT, which is basically the government, would postpone the deadline until December to help overstocked internal combustion engine dealers. There's about 4 million cars just sitting around in China that aren't selling. Apparently, factories are being slowed down or just, in fact, stopped completely because um, they have selling products that no one's buying or that... They have just too many cars of certain models that aren't selling. For example, the Nissan Sylphy. That makes up more than 50% of Nissan sales in the country, but it's a sedan. And it's not electric. They have a plug-in hybrid version, a new model apparently, but it, it's just not considered that good in comparison to BYD. So people are not buying the Sylphy like they used to. Big problem there. That's just one example though for many car makers facing this same challenge in China. Many sellers panicked, many legacy automakers panicked over their inventory and joined the price war offering massive discounts for their internal combustion engine vehicles in stock because after July the 1st, they would become unsellable. That's bad. If you've got billions of dollars in debt and China is your most important car market worldwide, which it is for most companies, uh, then what are you going to do? I mean, you got factories that are worth nothing, production lines that are worth basically nothing. Now, you can try and make your cars compliant, but that's incredibly hard. Look at the statements we've seen recently from BMW CEO, from Stellantis the CEO, from Volkswagen CEO, saying how hard it will be to comply with Euro 7 emissions regulations. Well, here's what Car News China said about that. After July the 1st, most of them will be unsellable because... China's emissions regulations called 6B are a strict Chinese emissions norm for internal combustion engine vehicles. An analogy is Euro 7 in Europe. Now, China knows this, right? But the thing is, they made this rule a long time ago. They gave these guys a lot of notice and they just ignored this. How can you ignore this? I can't understand this. It's so insane to just ignore this. Anyhow, 
The Chinese document says that light duty vehicles which undergo pollution monitoring tests with the result monitoring only will be given a transition period of six months, meaning they can be sold until the 31st of December. After that, nada. What are they going to do with all these millions of cars? They're going to have to dump them for virtually nothing. So now we see the 6B will not be postponed, but there will be exceptions for vehicles that comply with real driving emissions testing. So I don't know exactly what that means, but it means that basically legacy automakers are going to have to jump through some significant hoops just to sell the millions of cars that are sitting gathering dust right now. The China Association of Automobile Manufacturers, basically the government, has released a statement saying that this policy measure is based on the principle of assisting enterprises in distress by the Ministry of Ecology and Environment, combined with the current market situation. After the full demonstration, it provides substantial relief to the industry once again, following the expansion principle for optimizing light vehicle models at the end of 2022. Now, the problem here for China, though, is that basically every legacy automaker in China is part of a 50-50 joint venture, meaning Chinese local companies or the government themselves own 50% of the joint venture partnership with, say, whether it be Toyota or Subaru or Volkswagen or BMW or whoever it is. The China companies themselves own 50% and the foreign automakers own the other 50% in these joint partnerships. That's the entire automotive industry, except for Tesla and except for local Chinese companies like NIO, BYD, Xpeng, Nita, Hozon, etc. According to the report from the Chinese government automotive industry arm, as of January 2023, there was around 2 million vehicles in stock that did not meet these test requirements. But as of today, there's at least a million more of them. Starting the 1st of July, the production of the national 6B emission standard will no longer be possible. A six-month transition period will be implemented for RDE test models, resulting in a significant increase in production from May to June. The market is expected to stabilize and monthly output will be better promoted with June being the most favorable. I've got no idea why that is, but that's what carnewschina.com says. Now, the Chinese government said this, we believe that implementing this policy is a response to the industry's appeal, meaning the industry wants EVs, Chinese government wants EVs, and it's a highly beneficial policy for the country, the people, and the industry. And I have to agree. I mean, if you want to take over the global automotive industry, make more EVs, make them compelling, make good ones. They're doing that. They're trying to promote the electric vehicle industry because China knows that's the future of the global automotive industry. And basically, they want to take over this last bastion of engineering because it's the largest employer in the world. What's so crazy about this is that China actually unveiled these standards in December of 2016. That is a long time ago. They introduced the first phase called 6A on the 1st of July, 2020. 6B is effective on July the 1st, 2023. Incredibly, like I said, most companies, most international legacy makers just seem to ignore these rules. So here is what's being said. This is the perfect storm for the Chinese automotive market. It's the perfect storm for global automakers who are probably in position within a few years to go bankrupt. Think about it, right? If they lose China, what are they going to do? If they can't sell cars in China and then Europe wants EVs and they can't make enough EVs and China is all of a sudden flooding Europe with EVs, that means they lose China and it means they lose Europe. Well, what about North America? Well, in North America, EVs are growing at a rapid pace as well. And if you don't make EVs in North America, then you don't qualify for the battery incentives or for the tax incentives on the car sale, meaning you could lose North America as well. And if you're a Japanese automaker, what happens if you lose China, Europe and North America within the space of five years? Well, you don't exist anymore. That's what happens. You can't pay off your 20, 30, 40, $200 billion of debt, depending on which company you are. Perfect storm indeed. This is the mother of all perfect storms, and it really could trigger a global recession, if not a global depression. Who was the last company to go bankrupt? General Motors. Do I think they'll be one? Well, no, I think GM are focusing on North America quite wisely. 
But companies such as Nissan, Mazda, Subaru, Toyota, well, they're all pretty well cooked. None of them mass produce EVs. For example, Toyota, 0.2% of their car production last year were electric cars, and they have $200 billion in debt. The end could be closer for companies from Japan than what people realize. So basically, this video is a warning. Don't be invested in a company who may or may not have a future. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Thank you for watching.